This video is going to go over how to make a stipple or scatter brush in Photoshop, but if you're trying to make a big old texture brush, the first few steps of this video will also go over how to do that, since those are actually a lot more simple, since you're basically just you know, plopping a shape on there. Um, as a point of reference about what is a stipple or scatter brush, uh, the easiest way I can think of to kind of simplify it is think pointillism. A bunch of little dots used to kind of draw in and, and shade something. It's really useful, a uh, quite handy tool to have. Um, and as you can see here, I already have the basic shape going on. For a stipple brush, though, you basically want your shapes to be circular or somewhat close to it. I mean, these could be heavily distressed and there could be chunks missing. Uh, it'd probably still work just fine. Uh, just make sure you have a little bit of space in between each dot, a little bit of breathing room. And it's something kind of important to think about. In Photoshop, you can make brushes much more dense but you can't really thin them out. So always start a bit thinner than you think you'll need, and that's why there's, a, there's plenty of breathing room in this one. I'll go over how to actually make brushes much more dense in this video. And actually, I drew these in Illustrator, because I just prefer drawing simple shapes in Illustrator to Photoshop most of the time, but it, it truly doesn't matter how you draw them. You could draw them in Photoshop, you could draw them in Illustrator, you know, whatever, as long as you get them in there. Uh, the only things that do matter are that the background is white, and that the actual brush itself is either black or a grayscale. And if at any point in time in this video you find me going over stuff too quickly or I talk too quickly, which is a bad habit I have, uh, feel free to ask questions in the comments. I'll do my best to, to answer them as soon as possible. But let's get going here. So we have the brush done and we're ready to actually like convert it into a true brush. To do that, you just hop on over here up to top left hand and hit edit. And then kind of just below the middle, we go to define brush preset you're going to want to click Define Brush Preset. This will ask you, what do you want to name your brush? So we're going to make a super creative name of Video Brush 1. And also something really useful, it'll, it'll also tell you the maximum size of your brush. <clears throat> In this case, it's 279 pixels at its widest. or you know, So either like the widest in width or height, that'll be the size displayed. Uh, Adobe CS5 or below, the biggest you can possibly make a brush is 2500 by 2500 pixels. In CS6 or Creative, uh, Creative Cloud, it's 5000 by 5000. So if you make a brush in, let's say, CS6 at 5000 by 5000 pixels and you export it to someone who, let's say, is using CS2 and they try to open and import that brush and use it, it's going to error out and not them use it. So kind of keep that in mind with what you want to do with this brush in the long run and size it appropriately. And at the end, I forgot to mention, I'll actually go over how to export these brushes, either the one brush you make or even huge packs of brushes in case you want to save all your brush presets or perhaps make a pack of specific brushes that you want to use for a specific purpose or send to a friend, uh, whatever the case is. But we name the brush, hit OK. And I'm going to turn off this layer and open up a new blank one so we can kind of see what our brush looks like. Uh, just go to the down arrow up here. If this doesn't show, just hit B on your keyboard or select the brush from the, the toolbar on the left here. Hit the down arrow, go all the way to the bottom, and the furthest right brush will be the newest brush that you just made. So just scroll to the bottom and go as far right, and that's where you are. I'm going to make this brush a little bit smaller. I want a, a helpful tip. The two brackets on your keyboard, you know what's just right of the P button, there's like the... The bracket on the left makes it smaller, and the bracket on the right makes it bigger. So that's, a, that's how I very quickly change the size of my brushes in Photoshop. It's a super helpful tip if you don't know it. But I'm just going to draw straight left, or straight right. Directions, difficult. As you can see, it looks like what it is, essentially. It's the same exact brush, just repeated again and again and again. It doesn't look at all natural, and it definitely will not work well for shading stuff in. I mean, if I were to go in and just very quickly, you know, make circular shapes. It looks more natural that way, but it takes away the usability a ton. So, we're going to want to open up the brush window, which is where, you know, basically everything important happens. And as you can see here, there's a ton of options. I'm going to go over the top two only. Uh, the, the absolute best advice I could give anyone about most things Photoshop, just dive in and turn things on and off and see what happens and, you know, try it out until you get to where it looks the best. And if the brush window is not open for you, just go up to Window right here, and then Brush. So if I select it, it'll turn it off. I can go back up to Window Brush, pop it back on, and we're ready to go. So once again, the only two that I'm going to worry about right now are Shape Dynamics and Scattering. 
Shape Dynamics is what really helps it look like a natural brush. It randomizes things. It makes it look a lot, a lot better for a, a stipple brush. And I'll go over scattering after I go over Shape Dynamics. So I'm going to hit the box here to turn it on. And we're going to go over the, the important things to think about here, which are basically size jitter, angle jitter. Uh, roundness jitter is kind of a different beast altogether, but I will briefly go over it. Um, size, size jitter is basically affecting how does the brush look in terms of scale at its biggest and smallest. So without it on, it, it's very consistent. It's all the same size all the way across. If I pop it up to, like, let's say 50%, you can see it already looks a ton more natural because it is varying, you know, from a smaller to a bigger to a smaller in kind of a wave pattern. And if you have a, a pen tablet and you have control set to pen pressure, you can emphasize it even more. Like if I just go really light, you can see it's a very tiny brush. And if I really push down hard, it's much bigger. Uh, so pen tablets are super cool to have if you intend to get into brushes quite a bit. But you don't need them. As you can see, even just holding in a mouse, it does vary it, just not as much as a pen tablet could. And you can actually turn that off for a pen tablet if you want to. Uh, I don't really see the reason to turn it off, since if you don't have a pen, a pen tablet, it won't affect it anyways. So might as well just leave it on in case you ever do pick one up. But let's just crank down size here a little bit less to, let's say, 25%. Um, minimum diameter. Uh, basically sets the minimum brush diameter. So if you never want your brush to scale down really tiny, scale it all the way to 100%. And once again, no more variation. Um, let's if I try it with a pen. Even a pen tablet, you know, I'm not going to vary the brush that way. So, you know, I, I would almost never set this to 100% if you want a truly random brush. If you have something like a, a texture brush and you never want it to scale down, then you might want to crank that all the way up to 100 but for these purposes, I'm going to leave it at zero and give us the most possible uh, variance we can. Um, angle jitter basically rotates the brush around. And once again, it, it, it really helps make it look more natural. Uh, nature is a very random thing. So the more random your brush looks, the less it feels like a computer made it. So let's just crank this up to something high, like 50%. And draw right here. And as you can see, it starts to just twist that brush around. Everything's not going on the same path anymore. Uh, if I do it with a pen tab, it'll look even better. You know, we've got a nice beginning here for a stipple brush. Uh, roundness jitter, it's, it's a tough one to explain because it's kind of like it, it warps shapes together, like it squishes them. So I'm going to crank it all the way up to 100% just to overemphasize what this is doing. And if I zoom in here, you can see that it kind of like pushes the corners of the different shapes together. And it, it definitely helps things look more random. But if you're going to use it on something like a stipple brush, I'd keep it pretty low, like between 10 and 25%, something like that. And I'll actually just, you know, it's not really hurting anything, so I'll just leave it on here. Like I said, it does make things feel a little bit more random. And now on to the next setting. And, you know, once again, with all these different settings, the actual like percentages are going to change depending on what your brush looks like and how you want it to look. So really just play around until you're really happy with how it looks. The more time you spend playing around with it, the better end result you're probably going to get. So scattering. What scatter does is basically right now the brush, and this right here is another important thing to mention. Um, this is kind of like a, a basic rendition of what the brush looks like as Photoshop is kind of thinking about how is this going to look when I use it. So at the bottom here, this is the least amount of pressure. And as you get up, this is the most amount of pressure. And as you can see, it maintains a pretty tight uh, grouping here. If I turn scatter up more, um, just watch right here, you can see that it's you know, kind of pushing all the dots outward from the center point. So if I were to go crazy, like 1,000%, and I hit the brush, well, let's just move the brush, you can see they're scattered like absolute crazy. Uh, for a stipple brush, you don't want them scattered this crazy, but if you're trying to make like a, like, I don't know, like let's say you have a brush that looks like a leaf, and you want the leaves to look like they've blown all over the place like crazy, then, you know, you definitely want the scatter way up there, like pretty high, because it just kind of makes like a more random scattered group. And especially once they're rotated, you know, if it is something like a leaf, they'd scatter randomly while rotating, and it looks even more natural. But for a stipple brush, we don't want crazy, crazy. Uh, just something small. 
So there's a tiny bit of variance that helps it look a little bit more natural once again. I'm just going to type in 15%. We should be good. Let's draw a little test shape here to make sure it still looks pretty decent. It's looking pretty good. So the next thing, count. And when I talked about uh, the density, count is basically how you can easily change the density of your, uh, your brush. So I'm just going to draw a baseline right here. Count of one. So one of the brushes is current be, uh, currently being applied. If I change it to two, it's going to basically put in twice as many dots because it's applying the brush twice. So as you can see, this is basically twice as dense as this one. Um, if I make it a much, much higher count, like let's say 10, it's going to be a very dense brush. So, you know, that's where I'm like, start lighter than you think you need, because if you need to make it a lot more dense, you can do that within Photoshop um, in the settings here under scattering. Uh, and that way you can always adjust it on the fly and you're not kind of locked into a really heavy brush if maybe you don't want it to always be a really heavy brush. But for these purposes, I'm just going to do a, a light count, let's say two, and let's just do a test here. <clears throat> So, you know, these brushes are all about basically shading. So you can start light and then kind of go harder and harder. And you have a nice kind of gradation. And this is, you know, still a really rough brush, so it's maybe not the best example in the world. But, you know, you can even do one pass light and then just pass over it again. And then a little bit more to the right, pass over it again. And you can start to work on your gradations. And with a bit of practice, this is a very, very powerful tool for making really cool looking stuff pretty fast. I personally love it for something like type, where I can just select the type and then actually use the staple brush over it as a mask and kind of knock out like highlights or shadows, you know, depending on what the case may be. It has a lot of depth to your work that won't be there otherwise. Um, so just play around, have a bit of fun. And like I said, all these other settings, just go in there and play around, turn them on and off, and see what looks best. Now, to exporting. So you can save these brushes or, you know, bring them to a different computer or send them to a friend. What we're going to want to do is go to Edit, Define Brush Preset. Or, sorry, Edit, <laughs> Presets, and then Preset Manager. And Preset Manager is basically where Photoshop saves everything from brushes to swatches, gradients, you know, everything is essentially in there. So let's just select brushes. And right here in the bottom right hand corner is our brush. So let's say we want to just export this one particular brush. We would go right here to save set, click save set, and it's going to ask us where do we want to save it. So I'm going to go to desktop and be like, Oops. scatter brush. And if I hit save, we'd be done right there and we're ready to go. It'll save that brush as an .abr file and then you can load that into your uh, Photoshop, whatever you want. But let's say you made a bunch of brushes. So you can actually export complex sets this way too. If you hold shift, you can select anything in a row. So if I go from here and I'm like, I want everything from this brush all the way down, I select this one. While holding shift, I select this one. And anything that's in blue will be exported when you hit save set. <clears throat> Alternatively, if you hold control, you can just pick one and then pick another. So whatever you actually click while holding control will be selected. And then you can let go of control and hit save set. And basically whatever is highlighted in blue will be exported. So, you know, it'd be like, sweet brush pack, if I can type. And then when we hit save, they'll all be there. But that's really the gist of it. Um, once again, just play around until you're happy with the end result, and then you can export it, save it. And you can always, like, if you, if you make a brush pack and then you want to go back in and change things, you can just open them back up, change them, and then re-export it at a later time. Uh, it's the great thing about Photoshop is it remembers all these settings and you can just flip them on and off as you see fit. Uh, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments section. I'll do my best to answer them really quickly because sometimes I do talk a bit too fast or go over things too quickly. And also, if you found this video helpful, please subscribe and hit like. It lets other people know that, you know, it's a cool video. Give it a watch. And as a further point, I sell a bunch of resources online. So if you want to support what I do and kind of help me out and keep in 
allowing me to keep making these videos, uh, feel free to give it a look. I sell a ton of cool stuff from textures, brushes, etc. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. I truly do appreciate it. All right. Bye.